Hey guys, Park Manager Angelo here over at the Hiawassee River. What we're here to do is make sure that you guys come and have a blast when you get here. And one of the things our rangers have seen is that we're doing a lot of rescues because a lot of people are in inappropriate boats or they're not wearing the right gear. So what I want to do today is take a little bit of time to educate you about the types of craft that are correct for the different sections of the river so that when you come out and enjoy yourselves, you're going to get everything that you're expecting and have the most fun possible. Because it's no fun to be stuck on an island waiting on a ranger. Trust me. <laughs> All right, so we're looking at two different kayaks. And just like vehicles, different kayaks have different purposes. So you wouldn't want to haul a load of gravel in a Toyota Corolla, even though I may have been guilty of doing so at a time or two. So what we're looking at is we're looking at the one on the right is a whitewater boat and the one on the left is a boat that's more appropriate for a lake or still waters. If you look at this, the one on the right has smooth edges, no real hard cut edges. The reason why is because that boat is designed for shallow water and rapids. It's designed to displace water and it's designed to glide over rocks if it's in a shallow space. The blue boat, on the other hand, has what's called a skein. That's that large, hard edge that goes all the way down the boat. That is designed to help you paddle straight and track as straight as possible in a slow moving water or lake type situation. So the problem with that in a river is when you hit those rocks, that boat tends to tump over either to the left or the right because it's such a hard angle, it forces that boat to move one direction or another. And in just a second, we're gonna flip this over and I'll show you the other ends. Okay, so once again, we're back and we're talking about these kayaks from the top side. One of the main things to remember is your drain plug. If you forget that thing right there, you're gonna have a rough day because you're constantly gonna be having water coming in. That's just a little boater tip. You look at both of these boats, the green boat is very curved on the top as well. That's to displace moving water so that if you come into a rapid or current, it will push it off to the side. The blue boat, not being designed for swift water, is more flat at the top. So when you go into a rapid or a swift water situation, it is gonna push down a lot with a lot more force on that boat, and that's gonna cause you problems. Look at the seating. See how you sit down low in this kayak because this is all about balance. It's all about keeping you and the boat together moving as one piece. This other boat would be very comfortable to take fishing. It's got a cup holder. It's a uh, great boat for like a lake or somewhere slow. That way you can be comfortable and paddle around some slow moving water. Okay, we've moved over to sit on tops, which are a great option for newer paddlers who are wanting that kayak experience. However, once again, not all sit on tops are created for the same types of water. If you look at the boat on the right and the boat on the left, if you go by what we talked about with the earlier kayaks, you can tell the one on the right is more designed for white water than the one on the left, which has that scheme and it's also, the one on the right is made of much more dense plastic. So that this is designed to withstand some really hard hits. That boat has been in service for years and years and other than scrapes, you can't see any deformities on the frame. However, when you look at this orange boat, this orange boat has taken a good size hit and put a wrinkle. If you wanna get your money out of your boat and be able to enjoy a long time in your investment, make sure that you're taking on the right class of water. So these boats, the one on the left would not be good for the upper Hiawassee. It would be more appropriate for the middle or lower Hiawassee. Whereas the boat on the right, the red boat, would definitely be a better option for the upper Hiawassee. Okay, so now we're looking at them from the top. Both sit on tops, both designed to displace water if water gets into the boat. The issue with the one on the left is that once again, it doesn't have those soft angles at the top to displace water. So it's not really designed to be put right in the middle of rapids. Whereas the boat on the right is designed to displace water. If you look at the boat on the right, the thigh straps are designed to enable you to be better at cutting through rapids, leaning in and becoming more of one with the boat. The one on the left lacking those thigh straps is a little bit more problematic and would be more difficult to control and navigate on the, high, on the upper Hiawassee River. Show me your skirt. There we go. 
that little piece of material is protecting his lower body from getting water inside of it. They make skirts for all types, all types of kayaks for the sitting sides. But when you're in white water, you're in that class two white water, like on the upper Hawassi, that thing's gonna keep you dry. If you don't have it, you're gonna start getting water tossed up inside of it and your boat's gonna submerge. If thing goes as planned, you're in your boat, your skirt's keeping your water out and you're having a good time. If you don't have a skirt, I guarantee you on the upper Hiawassee, your boat is gonna get flooded. And this boat right here can probably hold at least 60 gallons of water. And when you consider that each gallon weighs eight pounds, you're carrying a whole lot of weight when this thing fills up that you're gonna to have to do something with or control. What you now have is a boat that you cannot lift up to save your life. Now, the current's pushing this now 500 pound behemoth down the river. You're trying to fight it. You're not having a good time. So that's why we recommend if you're gonna be in a sit-in kayak, on the upper Hiawassee that you really want a boat that's capable of a skirt. If you're not comfortable in that type of water or using that type of kayak, please feel free to use a different section or grab one of those sit-on tops. They're a whole lot of fun and you'll definitely not be the guy who's gonna have to dump this thing out in a few minutes. Control. One of the great things to purchase if you're gonna be whitewater kayaking in a sit-in is one of these, it's an airbag. What that does is that displaces some of the water and at least helps this kayak be a little more buoyant when it's full of water. What else do you have that's a safety thing on that kayak? You have a helmet. I like that pretty orange helmet. That's gonna keep the, uh, what is it called? The money maker looking good, right? So the, the helmets there, those aren't required on the Hawassi River. They're required on the Ocoee if you're out on a rafting company, but um, out here, it's just gonna be one extra safety measure to help keep you more safe. And then he's wearing something around his chest, which is a Coast Guard approved life vest. Well, friends, this concludes our video of proper watercraft for the upper Hawassi River. Also, remember that life jackets are required for the upper Hawassi River. We look forward to seeing you guys out there while you make memories and have your own adventure along this amazing, beautiful, scenic river. We'll see you out there.